Tammy, your Q and A session yeah. on a bumpy road. So it's Ooh. it's like if you it's doing like this, it's like it's Tammy's driving. No. And if the whole thing okay. falls down flat, we'll lift it up and we okay. apologize. All right. Some so we're going over. Rocky Johnson says so they have a test now for a, a DM. They found it in French Bulldogs. Well, they've had a test for DM forever, and they haven't found it in French Bulldogs. So it's all a it's all a complete hoax. French Bulldogs can have DM, but they do not suffer from DM. So anyway, enough of that one. Just your bigger dogs. Uh, is it okay to give my five week old French Bulldog Royal Canine Starter Moose if I mix it with Royal Canine Baby Dog Food? Uh, baby Dog Food and Royal Canine Moose? I don't know. Yeah. How old is the puppy? Five weeks. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's time to do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, because you're going to graduate to harder food each time. I would get him off of the baby moose and just soften the dog food. You can even grind it up in the mixer if you wanted to, but just soften the dog food and get away from so softening how do you, how do you soften more it? and more. Uh, hot water. For how long? Let it sit for about 30 minutes. There you go. Yeah. So I would never introduce a dog directly to kibble from being on mum. No, because it's too dry and hard for them. They yeah, they might inhale it. it and swallow yeah. it. Yeah, so definitely you want to stop. Whatever you do, you want to do a transition from mama's milk to a soft food of some kind, right? Yes. Yes, and there's no secret about Royal Canine Puppy Moose. In fact, right well, now... It's, it's real. it's real wet. And then if you want, you could add the uh, goat's milk to it, make it like a gravy so they can lick it up. Yum, yum. That's the purpose of that moosey. Sounds good. They love it. They do love it. They go ape over it. Oh, they would eat and eat. Their little bellies just oh. extend out so far. Yes. It's unreal. So that's another good question. How much food do you put down there? Well, you don't know when you have five in a litter. Well, I'd say enough that they can consume it in about eight to ten minutes, right? If you see leftovers cut back every time. Mama, yes. Mama will eat it, I promise you. You're yes. not wasting it. If you start to see puppies that have huge tummies, you're feeding them a bit too much. Let Mama in there to finish it up. Make sure there's not any competition going on with Mama and the baby. So be careful yeah. on that. Yeah. Always but, hang around. But you can feed more often less food than, you know, we typically do with puppies, what, two, three times a day when you start out on this channel? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, watch out for these extended bellies. It's not going to hurt them, but I mean, it just doesn't look right when you see a puppy <laughs> where its belly is bigger they than its head. They enjoy their food. Yeah, they love it. <laughs> and, and the other point about this is, is the sooner that you can get them onto some kind of high protein uh -oh. Oh, food, the, um, on, yep. right yeah, the, the quicker you can wean mum off. And look, especially if you've got a big litter of puppies, then you now you can have some puppies in there not getting enough nourishment, and so they can. Su oh. oh, sorry about that. Sammy accelerated so he didn't get killed. Well, that car was coming pretty fast. I know fast. it was. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> roads in Oklahoma need some work. Biden's going to fix that. Oh. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Infrastructure. <laughs> well, not this road. This road here. No, this road here is this is a kind of a country road. Just leave this out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but what I was getting to the point here was, the sooner that you can, I mean, you can start weaning puppies when they've got some teeth starting to show up. You know, three and a half, four three weeks. weeks yeah. they got little nubs. Yeah, right. So three and a half weeks. Yeah, get them, start yeah. getting them weaned, because it's not gonna do any harm. Mum can still be with them at night, you know, she can still be yeah. with them, giving them milk do too. It gradually, because you'll make her yeah. try to dry up too good quick point. and she'll get mastitis. That's a good point. Yeah, you don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't want mum. don't do cold turkey because mama will suffer. Right, exactly. So just be a, pay attention to that. But the point here is, is mum's blow coats, you know, when I say blow coats, they start to look really skinny, they look really pretty rough, and it's because they're making puppies out of themselves. So the puppy's got to come from somewhere, and if it's on mum, it's mum's milk. And if mum doesn't have enough milk, she's coming out of her. She will get, start losing weight and not looking very good. So the solution to this is, get them weaned onto some soft food as soon as you reasonably can. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I'm not going to say that. Oh dear. Oh. Cody Wood doesn't, Cory Wood doesn't like us, so. Oh, okay. He says, you're a prick, mate. <laughs> Why encourage you readers to create exotic colors? <laughs> Cody, don't oh, watch our channel. Goodness. Cody, just, just don't watch There's an on and off our... button. That's just right, turn Cody. It off. If you don't like it, we respect that. It's simple. Just don't you watch our channel. Can't make everybody happy. But if you're going to continue to say nasty things about us, we're just going to block you. It's simple as that. So anyway. Um, well, you just... 
put his name out there, so yeah, right. made him feel good, I guess. Yeah, well, I don't want to make him feel bad. I mean, I'm sure he's a really nice guy. He's English because he called me a prick, mate, so he's an Englishman. I'm a fellow Englishman. Well, not anymore. I'm an American now. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look here. This is uh, Cute Bunny. Cute Bunny says... Emmy's <laughs> driving, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Laugh it up, sister. My <laughs> French is a black and white hide. Her mum was a black that carries brindle. By, by the way, a black that carries brindle is a brindle. Um, pied and cream, and a dad carries lilac and cream. I'm hoping you can help me understand what dogs. Uh, okay, well, yeah, I should have read this beforehand. Well, look, if you put a pied with a pied, you get all pied puppies. So that's okay. it. Make sure you don't have an extreme pied. Yeah, all that sort of, yeah, so we've done some videos and some comments, some things about this. A, an extreme pie that Tammy's talking about is a dog that has mostly white on its body, very little color, specifically very little color on its face or ears. Those dogs, if they produce puppies like that, are likely to have poor hearing or maybe deaf. So you've got to be a little bit careful about that. Um, okay, but look, a pied with a pied, you get all pieds every time. Uh, if you've got a brindle there, you're likely to get brindle pies. It's going to be the dominant colour out of it. So that's the most likely thing you're going to get. So we can't tell you much more about that. Um, oh, somebody's asking about where we've uh, removed the puppy claws, do claws. claws, and then we sent them off for DNA. It says, does the nail grow back? No. It, if you do it right, yeah. it doesn't. Now, if you do it wrong, it will grow back. Yes. But the idea about doing it right is you are specifically moved. We're not removing the nail for a DNA test. It's just convenient that we can do a DNA test with that material. There's other ways to do DNA tests that don't require that, that you that you remove uh, the dew claws. Yeah. For instance, um, puppies that are nursing, you can't swab their mouths. But you can prick their paw. Well, you can with, swab their mouth, but you got to take them away from mama for. Uh, they say quite don't do it until they're oh. six weeks old. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. that's so general yeah. genetics, you know. But but what you can do is you can just simply prick their paws with a sharp needle. Yeah. Uh, fresh one for every puppy. Just yes. Collect a little bit of it on the head of a cuter. Because you'll get that DNA transferred over to the other. If you share a needle. Yeah, if right. you share a needle, you need to. But but the but the, the comment on your comment here, if you don't remove the the nail the dew claw properly then it will grow back. And so uh, the secret to this is, is to get the hemostat on the dew claw properly to remove it. And if you do it properly- Oh, you've got a video. I've got a video. There's no harm to the puppy. It's very quick and, and the puppy doesn't hardly, I mean, it might do a little squeal for literally half a second. Uh, and this is one for Tammy. Can you breed two lilacs together to make lilac puppies? Yes. Every time. <laughs> we guarantee it. Straight if, cream in the cream. If, if you've got, if, yes, if you've got two lilac puppies and you put them together, you will get lilac. Now, blue the, blue. there are some things that could happen that would if cause... If the DNA is different on the, each one on the inside. Well, what I was going to say is, let's say you had a lilac puppy that carried cream. Yes. Bred to a lilac puppy that carried cream. You would not see the cream in either of the lilac parents, but one quarter of the litter would be creams and actually be what we call platinums. They'd be lilacs coming in cream. And then you wouldn't see the lilac, but they are lilac dogs. And that's the only platinum is only a lilac or a lilac and tan. So let's have to say something to Rene Muro. Thanks for teaching us. You are the best on the web. Other dogs tell us no breeders like you. Yay! Don't Thank hit you. my hand hard. Don't hit it hard. Thank you. We appreciate that kind of feedback. So we do work hard to try to give you good information. Um, and it is not just about, you know, our, our, our trying to uh, build ourselves up. This no. is about trying to build you James up. James started it by worrying about some of the questions he was getting from some people. And he thought, well, he'll start doing videos to help yeah, people yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. We've got a lot of questions where people... And he's got the gift of gab. Uh, about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you say I talk too much. <laughs> and um, Ed says you talk too much. <laughs> what do you think of Oxy Stud? So Oxy Stud, there's a whole line of Oxy products. Oxy Mama, Oxy Mates, Oxy... Uh, Oxy Stud. Um, they've been bought out now by, I think, Revival, I think, maybe, or Chewy bought them out. But they're, they're well-followed products. Um, so the idea behind this is that you're trying to do something to increase a, a stud's um, uh, virility. Um, you know, I, 
the trouble with this is, is that I think that we've got similar products that are being used for humans, uh, and, and it's questionable as to what the science is behind this. I don't think you can do any harm. So that being said, go for it. I don't know that you'd ever know that it was successful because, you know, it's like when you go to the doctor and, and, and you go to the doctor, they give some medication and, and then the, the symptoms go away. You credit that to the doctor, whereas 50 to 75% of the time it would have gone away all by itself. So, you know, anyway, enough on that one. Someone's saying, can I make extender? That's a good question, because I've thought about this for a long time. In fact, I did make extender when I first started doing this. And the answer is yes, you can make extender. The problem is, is the, how are you gonna know that your extender's any good? And the answer to this is, is that you've gotta do a significant amount of testing. We sell Canaplus that comes from Minitube. I've been using that product now for five years. And I love the product, I swear by it. For us personally, over 5,000 consecutive shipments without a failure in semen. And part of that is, of course, our shipmate product. But the other is married to a great extender. And I like their extender because it doesn't have to be frozen. You can use it directly out of the fridge by just warming it up. It has a two year shelf life and it doesn't have any particular matter in it, which I see as a problem. When I'm looking at things like what we call Kenny based extenders that are used um, skimmed milk or powdered milk or egg yolk based products. They're biologicals, so they can go bad. I don't like those, and my experience with those and my testing, it says they're nowhere near as good. So the answer is, I wouldn't muck around with this. I think it's a mistake to try to, and I, I, I went down this path because I was spending a lot of money on extender, and I spend a lot of money on extender today, but I only sell one product, and that is uh, Canny Plus long-term 10-day extender from, uh, we sell it, and you can buy it from Minizu, you probably buy it less from us. I swear by the stuff, I wouldn't muck around with this. I would go ahead, but a good question. And by the way, I really like this attitude that what can you do yourself? I think that the more things that you can take control over, the better you understand the process. Well, you know your dog better too. You well, I mean, yes. And I mean, yeah. look, I mean, if you start relying on other people, vets, me, that's where you could potentially get bad information. And so everything that you do needs to be followed up by that bullshit detector that says, oh, I don't think what I've been told is right, I'm gonna go find out about it. So look, um, the very fact that you are interested in trying to do different things, I think is is uh, kudos to you. It's, it's uh, That's the way you should be. We're going to the airport to deli deliver a puppy. We're gonna do one more on this before we get there. Huh? Um, My nanny calls, I gotta go right up there. Oh, okay, well, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm waiting. Ohio Kennel, 3.30 Ohio Kennel says, uh, just recently had a breeding, not didn't take. She was at 10 nanograms per milliliter on progesterone. I did an AI like always. I use uh, a whole, she got the rod in everything. Um, however, this was the back end of a split heat. Is it possible she didn't drop any eggs or the rod was too long? Okay, well first let's just handle the rod too long business. No, you can't have a rod that's too long. Look, if you've got a rod in that was too long, it means you've perforated something and it keeps on going and that dog will probably die. So it just, you, you you'd, have, it. you'd have to take a hammer to the end of it and just hammer it. Look, think about this. If you take an AI rod and you try to push it through a stake, you know, a, 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 you know, a ribeye stake, you, you just couldn't get it done. I mean, you could get it done, but it would take a huge... Yeah, I mean, the dog would go nuts. You'd know that you'd done something terrible. You'd probably get some blood discharge. The dog would probably turn around and quite rightly bite the crap out of you. I mean, the rod's not too long. That's not the issue here. The issue here is, did the dog drop eggs? Yes, the dog dropped eggs, but apparently not at the time or within a day of when you did the AI. That was the issue. It's a timing issue. And you specifically said this was the back end of a split heat. So there's, there's your problem. So... Let's just talk for a few seconds about split heats. So a split heat typically happens in younger dogs, dogs that are, um, you know, a year to a year and a half old. That's the typical split heat scenario, where their numbers start going up and then they stall out and they go back down and they go back up and then a dog doesn't show any blood and then three days later you get some more blood and so on and so forth. 
you don't really know where you are. You've got to just keep on progesterone testing on these dogs. And, and my recommendation would be always, if you can, do a progesterone test after you think you're finished to make sure the numbers are 18 or higher. And if they're not, do another breeding. And that's probably the issue here. Probably the dog slipped backwards again. And so you probably, although you thought the dog had ovulated, in fact, it hadn't. And then the other thing about this is be careful about the type of machine that's used for the measurements. If this is a mini vitus, a mini vitus, you have to almost halve those numbers. A mini, so on an IDEX, on most machines, we're breeding around a 15 for a vaginal AI. Um, and on a mini vitus, that's more like a 28. So almost twice the number. So pay attention to that because you can absolutely get tripped on it. And I, I routinely get people who've gone to the vet to use one of my studs and they come up with a number and I see on the little report mini vitus and the vet hasn't told them anything about this. And so that's kind of worrisome because, you know, you wonder whether the vet knows how to interpret, you know. And here's, and this is the last part of this whole video. The, the other thing about this is kind of disturbing and I don't have a good answer for you is if we say that something's in nanograms per milliliter, it shouldn't matter what machine it's on. It should be the same because that is nanograms per milliliter. But apparently it's not the same. And a mini vitus does read higher, although they do interpret it as nanograms per milliliter and they're not. So I don't know what to tell you on that. That's just crazy. We're here, Amelia Earhart so, Street. Okay, um, that's it for this video. Hey, thanks for subscribing to us. We'd love it if you uh, uh, continue to watch our videos. If you think we've got things right, let us know. If you want more videos on other things, let us know. If you think we've got things wrong, let wait, us know. Wait, wait. Oh, yeah. We've got fluffies coming like May 9th. Full visual fluffies. They'll be blue and tans, chocolate and tans, lilac and tans, or platinum. Maybe a platinum. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So give me, give me a shout at 580-799-1910. And then yes. we'll be having some short hairs the end of May. Little uh, Picasso's been painting again. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And while, so, we're, while we're talking about that, I'm just going to show a picture here of some fluffies. These, well, these. Be able to see it. Oh, that's Denali's babies. Oh, can I get it? Wait, uh, that's not very good. Uh, yeah, we're in the sun no, too much. No, you're in the sun too much. Okay. Here we go. Those are some full fluffies. They're not. It's not our girl, but it's our boy Denali who produced those. Those are such pretty babies. Amelia Earhart. Love them. Anyway, so there we go. But thanks for watching, and uh, hey, keep 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 being good to your doggies. Bye. Um,